Good evening and welcome to the 2024 dis Spring District Dialogues. This is presented by Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr., who is the Commissioner of Fulton County District 5. Tonight will be, be one of many town halls that will be about tax exemptions, homestead exemptions. Tomorrow, there will be a town hall at the City of South Fulton Economic Development Office off of Old National. Thursday, there will also be another town hall in Fairburn at um, one of our senior centers. And then on Friday, I mean, no, Monday, excuse me, next Monday, there will be our final town hall and it will be in the City of South, City of South Fulton at Welcome All Park. All of the evening ones start at 6 o'clock to 7 p.m. Commissioner Arrington will be there to answer all your questions and also the tax assessor's office. In April, we will be having a very important town hall on April the 18th at Wolf Creek Library, and it will discuss the um, inequities of health care below I-20. And Commissioner Arrington has coalesced a wonderful panel to have educated conversation and to offer solutions to this disparity in the deliverance of health care below I-20. So without further ado, here's Commissioner Marvin Arrington, Jr. of Fulton County District 5, the best district in Fulton County. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Marvin Arrington, Jr. So happy that you could join us this evening. Uh, we're here for our homestead exemptions tax hall, uh, our town hall. Uh, we want everyone to make sure that they are aware of their homestead exemptions and that they are getting uh, that everyone pays their fair share and no more. Uh, and if you uh, own your home and have not applied for a homestead exemption, uh, then certainly you may be entitled uh, to some tax relief from Fulton County uh, if you register for a homestead exemption. There are uh, numerous tax exemptions in Fulton County. I believe there are uh, 18 taxing jurisdictions or something like that. And uh, we've got James Whitman with the assessor's office who will uh, correct any, uh, any information that I give that might be wrong. But I believe there are 18 taxing jurisdictions, the 15 cities, the county, uh, and the two school districts. So there are 18 different taxing jurisdictions in um, Fulton County and they all have their own set of exemptions. So today we're gonna to be focusing on the Fulton County exemptions. And so if you live in another city, you may want to reach out to that city about the tax exemptions for that specific city. Uh, and also the school districts, you may wanna also reach out to Fulton County Schools uh, if you live outside of Atlanta or to Atlanta Public Schools, if you live inside the city of Atlanta. Uh, Dorsha talked about our uh, upcoming uh, homestead exemption town halls. We try to do this every year before the deadline. The deadline is April 1st. April 1st is the deadline to have your homestead exemption in. Uh, so we're doing this town hall tonight. Um, Tomorrow night, we will be doing a town hall, uh, or March 13th, uh, which I guess is tomorrow. We'll be doing Homestead Exemptions Town Hall uh, at the City of South Fulton Economic Development Office on Old National Highway. Uh, and uh, she, Dorsha talked about those as well. We'll do one in Fairburn at 11 a.m. on Thursday at the New Beginning Senior Center. Uh, and then we'll do one on March 18th at Welcome All Park uh, at 6 p.m. So uh, spread the word and let others know about these upcoming homestead exemption town halls. Um, and from there, I will turn it over to our resident expert, Mr. James Kevin Whitman. Uh, from the Fulton County Assessor's Office so that he can tell us more um, and fill in all of the details uh, that I didn't fill in. Uh, welcome, James. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Arrington. It is a uh, joy to be a part of this. 
Uh, we certainly look forward to every opportunity that we have to get out um, good information as it relates to the homestead exemptions in Fulton County. As the commissioner stated, we do have a large variety of homestead exemptions that are available to our citizens. And we certainly want everyone to be, uh, be aware of that and take advantage of it, uh, especially as he said for this year uh, in a timely fashion uh, with the that due date, if you will, of April the 1st, uh, soon to be upon us. Just a real quick overview of the Board of Assessors. That's the entity that's responsible for basically approving or denying homestead exemptions. Uh, you do make application with the tax assessor's office. Once those homestead exemptions, for example, are approved, uh, we apply that code that uh, designates the exemption that you qualify for to your property. And ultimately, the tax commissioner's office utilizes that to uh, calculate your tax bill. As far as our office is concerned, I'm the deputy chief appraiser, one of uh, four deputy chief appraisers. I'm on the left-hand side of the screen down there at the bottom as far as homestead exemptions. Our field book office, which is deed transfers, and our GIS division, I'm responsible for those areas of our office. When it comes to homestead exemptions themselves, they are uh, legal provisions uh, established by both state and local legislation to help to reduce the assessed value of owner uh, owner occupied homes. And as we said, you can you can apply for homestead exemption at any point during the year at any time. But in order for your homestead exemption application to apply to the current year's taxes. You do have to apply, as the commissioner said, by April the 1st. So, again, that is an important deadline for you to keep in mind uh, with regard to homestead exemptions. Um, just to talk a little bit about homestead, how homestead exemptions work, uh, all properties, uh, all taxable properties, uh, residential properties in the county are appraised at their 100% fair market value as of January the 1st of each year. We talk about fair market value or essentially talking about what you would put your home on the market for and what it would sell for uh, on an, in an open market, an arm's length transaction, that type of thing. The assessed value is 40% of that 100% value. That's your actual taxable value. And that is the value that the tax commissioner's office uses to calculate your tax bill. What a homestead exemption essentially does is reduce the taxable value of your property. And as a result of that, you get a tax savings. That's what uh, comes of all of that. And that's why it's important uh, that you apply for and, and, and get every homestead exemption that, that is available to you and that you qualify for. So it's essentially a reduction in your actual uh, tax bill, property tax bill in Fulton County and these other jurisdictions, as the commissioner mentioned. We already said there's a variety of uh, exemptions that are available. When it comes to basic exemptions, the only requirement there is really to own and occupy the property as of January the 1st of that year. And so if you're applying for a homestead exemption for 2024, uh, you would have to own and occupy that property as of January the 1st of 2024, and you would want to make your application by April the 1st uh, of 2024, just a few weeks away. We do have other special exemptions, um, and of course, each one of these exemptions are uh, driven by the legislation that is behind them, uh, and depending upon your age or your income, you may qualify for an additional exemption above and beyond what is offered through the basic exemption in Fulton County. There are also other what we call special exemptions that apply to disabled veterans, uh, the surviving spouses of disabled veterans, and the surviving spouses of a peace officer or a firefighter, for instance, that were killed in a line of duty. Uh, there's also what is referred to oftentimes as a poverty exemption. It's a low income exemption. 
and it is dependent upon the federal adjusted gross income of all of the residents of a household. And I always like to emphasize that because sometimes there is a little bit of confusion about that, but it's the federal adjusted gross income of all of the residents that reside or that live in that property. When they are below certain amounts as dictated to us by the legislation, you can qualify for up to a 50% reduction in your property tax bill as a result of that. So a very important one as well. Um, there was a new exemption that came uh, into law and into being in tax year 2023. I indicated on this slide that to be eligible for it, you had to be 65 again as of January 1. And this particular legislation says that you have to have been granted a homestead exemption in Fulton County for the past five years at the time of making the application. For those of you who may have applied for an age 65 exemption in 2023, or you already uh, had an age 65 exemption in 2023, this particular exemption was applied to your uh, property, really regardless of whether you applied or did not apply, if you already had that age 65 exemption. And I simply say that to, to indicate that when you apply for this exemption in 2024, it is a $10,000 exemption off of the school portion, the Fulton school portion of your tax bill. So it is additional dollars that at the end of the day, bring a savings to you if you meet that qualification. When it comes to actually filing for a homestead exemption, we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, you can file online through our online portal at FultonAssessor.org. You look under the exemptions tab, you will find uh, the homestead exemption uh, webpage and you can go on there, follow the instructions, and file your application online. Uh, in addition to that, you can also upload uh, documents that are applicable to the exemption that you're applying for. And then you can also correspond with our homestead staff, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding the status of your homestead exemption application. Sometimes, for instance, you may have applied, you may have, you may have provided some documentation, maybe not all, maybe the incorrect documentation. Staff will simply notify you through the smart ball application of what documentation you need to supply us. You can resubmit that again all through the online portal, and we can process your application that way. It's probably the most straightforward. Uh, you know, a way of not only applying, but also for us on the backside of processing these greatly simplifies the process. Uh, but you can also apply manually. Oftentimes, what we, our experience is that seniors many, time, like, many times like to actually visit the office uh, and bring their documentation with them. And we certainly welcome that. We have two locations in the north in Alpharetta on Maxwell Road. Uh, and then the North Fulton Service Center, which is on Roswell Road in Sandy Springs. We have two locations in the South, South Fulton Service Center on Stonewall Tail Road uh, in the city of South Fulton. And then we have an office as well at the Greenbrier Mall, which is inside the tax commissioner's office. We have a location inside there as well. And then two locations downtown, one at 141 Prior Street at the Government Center, and then at 235 Peachtree Street in the, uh, at the Peachtree Center, where our administrative offices are located. You can visit any of those, obviously. You probably want to visit the one that's closest to you, uh, but you can come in, bring your information, and our staff will be glad to serve you there. I will say that whenever you're doing the manual applications in our office, uh, you simply supply the documentation that you have. Staff takes your information and enters that into the system, and then they provide you a receipt out of our system that identifies all the pertinent details that you have provided for your homestead exemption. 
And so you not only have uh, evidence of the fact that uh, you applied, but also you can review whatever information was taken in and ensure that it is correct. And if there are any problems, we can correct that uh, on the spot, so to speak. Um, in terms of what you need or what documentation you need to provide, again, when it comes to a basic homestead exemption, the only things we're looking for is did you own it and did you occupy it on January the 1st of that given year? So we're interested in a valid Georgia driver's license. If you don't have that, then a valid Georgia identification card. You can provide your social security number. Or really the other important documents outside of a valid Georgia driver's license or a valid Georgia identification card is the registration for the vehicles owned by and registered by the uh, property owners and their spouses. Again, all of this documentation is simply used to verify this is your place of residence. This is where you dwell, okay? Uh, when it comes to properties that are in the name of a trust, you can still qualify for a homestead exemption. We simply need to see those, the trust affidavit. And in some cases, the trust documents, if there's any question as to whether or not the person that is residing in the property is actually an owner. So again, that's what those documents are providing for us. Uh, when it comes to special exemptions, those senior exemptions or income-based exemptions, uh, we require the state and federal tax returns. Again, these uh, exemptions are driven by the legislation that's behind them. Uh, some exemptions require your federal gross income. Some exemptions require your Georgia gross income. That's what we talk about. Uh, providing both returns. Uh, if you don't, if you don't file an income tax, you can simply provide your Social Security award letter. We can identify your yearly income based on that. If it's some kind of veterans disability exemption, there is a form that the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs provides that shows not only that your disability is the result of uh, a combat incident. It'll show the level of your disability or the level of compensation that you're receiving for that disability. So in some cases, you may have someone that's, I say only 80% disabled as opposed to 100, but if they're receiving 100% compensation for that disability, then they would still qualify even though they're not at 100%. Uh, also for anyone that has a medical disability, uh, there are affidavits that are required from your physician that simply show that you're either 100, that you're 100 unemployable or cannot be gainfully employed. We actually have those documents on our website at ThorntonAssessor.org, and you can download those, take them to your doctor, your physician. They can simply sign them, you return them to us, and uh, and we can utilize that. I do emphasize that if you are applying for a homestead exemption, uh, your name does have to be on the deed, okay? You do have to be an owner, and again, you do have to occupy uh, in order to qualify. And if you have any questions about any of this, we do have an online guide uh, at our FultonAssessor.org website on that homestead page that I mentioned that goes into a lot more detail than even what I'm discussing here, or you can contact any of our offices, talk to our staff, and they'll be glad to walk you through that process. One other thought to keep in mind is that when you go online through our portal to apply, oftentimes people don't know or may not even have any idea what exemptions they all may, you know, that they may qualify for. And the way the online portal is designed, it's going to ask you different questions to make sure that the exemption that you are approved for is the best exemption that you qualify for, the one that will benefit you the most. So even if you don't understand all of the particular laws behind all of this, the online portal is designed to guide you in the, down the right path. And again, if you come to our office, our staff is glad to have any kind of discussion that you need so that you that you feel comfortable 
that what you're getting uh, is what you qualify for and is benefiting you the most. Again, as far as applying online, it's FultonAssessors.org. Look at our exemptions tab on the right. You can contact our office at 404-612-6440, extension 4. Uh, Florence Brooks is our homestead manager and has been for many years. Uh, you can contact her or uh, uh, any of our other staff. They're glad to help you. And then there I am again. I'm the deputy chief appraiser. You can feel free to reach out to me through email or, or via the phone and uh, be glad to take your calls, answer any questions. You may have questions today and I'll do my best to answer those for you as well. But that's all I have today. All right, thank you so much um, for sharing that information with us about homestead exemptions. I hope everyone was paying attention and uh, taking copious notes. Uh, uh, again, the deadline is April 1st to file for your homestead exemptions. Uh, the basic homestead exemption, there are additional homestead exemptions based on your age. Uh, I think there's one at what, 60 and then 60? Uh, it's age 62, age 65, age 70. Just keep in mind, if it's age 62 or age 70, there are income requirements to go along with that. But at age 65, it's a basic senior exemption. So it's just the fact that you own it, you reside in it, and you're 65 as of January 1st. All right. And then obviously the additional exemptions that we discussed were for uh, disabled veterans and surviving spouses of veterans and police officers and firefighters. Uh, again, there are 18 different taxing jurisdictions in Fulton County, including the county, the 15 cities, uh, and the two school jurisdictions. Uh, so there may be additional uh, exemptions that you may be eligible for, but you may have to contact your individual city uh, or school jurisdiction to apply for those. So um, thank you again. And we will have uh, another town hall, uh, homestead exemption town hall tomorrow. I know we've mentioned it once or twice already, but uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. we'll be on Old National Highway at the City of South Fulton Economic Development Office uh, on March 14th uh, at 11 a.m. We'll be in the City of Fairburn. Uh, at the New Beginning Senior Center to talk about homestead exemptions. Uh, and then uh, March 18th, we'll be at Welcome All Park uh, to talk about uh, additional homestead exemptions. And I saw Dorsha raised her hand. I must, uh, maybe I got something wrong. No, we have two questions from the audience. Okay, yes. Um, let's go to those. And then I have uh, one or two questions myself. Okay, um, from an anonymous attendee, how do you get an exemption for having chickens and or bees? I think they must mean livestock. I got chicken and bees in my house, but I don't think that counts. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. the, the commissioner is correct on that. There is a, uh, what, what is known as the conservation use program. Uh, it's outside of the realm of homestead exemptions, but it is a 10-year covenant that's available for properties that have a primary use of, or, of agriculture. Uh, that application can also be found online at FultonAssessor.org, and uh, we have staff that's available that are experts in that field uh, that can give further information along those lines as well. well say the name of that again. Please. Yes, uh, it's called conservation. a conservation use uh, application. It's really okay. current use valuation. You know, it has a long acronym, but if you say conservation use application, they'll know what you're talking about. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And the second question is. So once you've submitted the homestead exemption, it's only one time, correct? What if, what if I think it's not being applied correctly? Who do I contact? 
you know, once a person files for a homestead exemption and they're qualified, the homestead exemption remains until that person either sells the property or something of that nature. The only caveat to that is when we were talking about age 62, 65, and 70, the way things currently operate, once you reach those age marks, you do need to come in and file for that ex additional exemption. If you have any question as to whether or not your exemption is being applied correctly, contact our office. Uh, you can contact Florence, you can contact myself, um, and we'll be glad to uh, you know, review that for you and help you have whatever comfort level you need to ensure that um, you know, the, the exemption is being applied as, as mandated by law. When you put your, uh, your contact information and email in the chat for yes. everyone and, and maybe Florence's as well, just in case someone wasn't around and missed that, uh, yes, slide where you had the, where you shared the information. Okay. I sent on um, Florence's email to that particular person. Okay, good. Yeah, well, I will we'll just share it with everyone in the chat so that everyone has access to it because someone else may be shy. They may have a question and don't want to ask it. Uh, or at least not in front of everyone. Yeah. All right. Was... All right. And so I think that's the two questions that we had. Um, and I know this next question actually may be a little bit out of your realm um but people have been trying to pay their property taxes and i know they pay the property taxes to the tax commissioner but because of the it issues that we've been facing um what 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 can you share if anything about the it issues and the ability for people to pay taxes because i know the website was down people couldn't pay online they would have had to go come into one of the offices yeah as you stated the um the uh cyber security issue uh, did hinder uh, probably the tax commissioner's office as far as our our tax structure they were they were probably the greatest impacted uh in regards to that we did have a meeting earlier today and again i'm, I'm not with the tax commissioner's office but i was involved in a meeting today and my understanding is that the tax commissioner is able to receive payments once again through a credit card and that type of thing. I think previously he could only do it through cash or a check or something of that nature. I don't know that they are 100% fully restored, but the statement that was made uh, earlier today was that they were about 99% restored. Um, so uh, obviously the best person to contact about that is the tax commissioner's office but I did want to put it out there that that uh, the information we received today from Dr. Ferdinand himself was that uh, that functionality has been restored. They can actually make those payments. Awesome, thank you. And I, I knew that was a, a different office, but glad to know that uh, you guys are staying in communication um, yeah. for the benefit of the residents and glad that you were able to provide that update for us um looks like we might have one more question oh okay comment from jessica corbett thank you that is breaking news as of this afternoon and online payments are now working thank you <laughs> jessica yes thank you um so you look guys uh, District 5, Home Exemption Tax Hall, you get the breaking news. You find out right <laughs> here live that we are, Fulton County is accepting payments again from the tax commissioner's office for payment of property taxes. Uh, so uh, I believe that that is all that we have. Uh, Dorsha, is anything else that I missed or anything else that we need to cover? Uh, uh, James, can you uh, send that information again? When you sent it, it was to host and panelists and not to everyone. Oh, I got you. Okay. Um, it's like a little drop down. Yeah. Yep. I, I was trying to copy it, but it won't let me copy and paste. So. Yeah. 